senior bankers at the World Economic Forum have been described as being humbler this year as they were last, that were well, more humbler than they were in the last year. So could it be something to do with the prospect of lower pay? You know, you were just talking about uh, some of the cuts that we've seen there at Credit Suisse and Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Poppy. It, it seems as though there are cutbacks going on. What has been, what impressions are we getting from the bankers here at Davos? Well, it's only here at Davos that they can all get together in the same room. Now, you have all the sessions that are on the schedule that people like you and I and the other delegates attend, but there are lots of secret summits going on as well. And this is a place where all these guys, I've seen the heads of Barclays, the heads of Deutsche Bank, the heads of UBS at this meeting yesterday. It's the only place they can sit down and talk through the big banking issues like the ones you mentioned. I think overall we, we discuss uh, our relationship with the regulators, which is very important. We discuss the global economy and the, the current challenges. And also, importantly, I think what contribution the industry can make uh, to increase growth and, and fight unemployment. And I can tell you that they were talking about the contributions they can make to the recovery, but the conversation was dominated by cuts to the industry to come this year. All right, and we also know that they had something of a secret meeting, didn't they? And U.S. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner was there. What do we know about what went down? Well, those guys, the most powerful banking CEOs in the world, waited an hour for Mr. Geithner to arrive. And he came for about 20 minutes. He didn't make a speech, Miriam. He just came to listen, to take their questions, to get the message from the bankers of their concerns in the industry. But, and the bankers really had a message that they wanted to get across to him, too. It, it seems clear, I think, to everyone that the, uh, the European uh, you know, central bankers are going to have to put up a firewall that is big enough and strong enough and powerful enough to create confidence that it'll be there and that the liquidity and the capital will be there. And there is certainly a sense of frustration, Miriam, amongst the banking industry, that the politicians, the regulators, the likes of Tim Geithner and Mark Carney, mm -hmm. who's a Canadian uh, governor of the Bank of Canada, are not moving fast enough. So that's where the tension came between those two groups. It's a fascinating situation because you've got the banks coming under pressure uh, from regulation. We hear that they're making cutbacks. There's public opposition, and then there's this push and pull with the politicians as well. Uh, do they hold less sway now here than they, than they did in, in years gone by? Well, here's a fact that just puts the banking industry in context this year versus last. 230,000 jobs have been cut in the financial services sector between last year's Davos and this year's Davos. So last year, the bankers were in a position to lobby against some of the regulation they thought would prevent growth in the industry. I think that position is diminished by a very, very significant extent this year. They're doing a lot mm. more listening in Davos 2012, Miriam. All right, good stuff. Thanks very much, Poppy. And